Hey everybody, Rick Peterson here, Goes to 11 Media. Today we are going to do a product review of a really unique product that I'm quite excited about. Uh, it's called the Cassis Grill, uh, and it's a portable, disposable, 100% biodegradable uh, barbecue that you can take with you anywhere, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, as you guys know, watching my videos, I do a fair amount of fishing. And uh, to me, this would make a lot of sense to take with me. Uh, it's light, probably weighs uh, two, three pounds. It's not very heavy. Uh, and I could throw it into the vehicle and take it with me, catch the fish, be able to do a barbecue right there and then. I'm not having to lug a bunch of heavy uh, cooktop type of things, uh, Coleman stoves or whatever, uh, propane tanks, all those different things. So what we've got is you've got your grill top here. And this is an important step that they've told, uh, the, the, basically what you need to do is to assemble your, um, your base. And what this does is it actually gets the unit up off of the, uh, the, the tabletop you're using or whatever. and gives a little bit of a uh, gap for, for heat. So make sure you just take that extra few seconds to do it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I don't know why people wouldn't do that. And here's the actual unit. Now, what you actually have is you have um, your, I believe they're made from bamboo, these little uh, charcoal briquettes. Um, and we all know how rampant and easily bamboo grows. So it's a sustainable resource. There's no shortage of bamboo uh, in the world. This is um, uh, some sort of a lava rock from what they were telling me that um, they've compressed in little pellets to create the actual insulation lining of it. and. Uh, this is what basically makes the the heat not transfer to the cardboard. Because when they showed me this and they're telling me that it's cardboard, I'm thinking, how in the dickens is this actually not going to just all burn up on me? Uh, but you know what? This thing makes a ton of sense how they've done this. So you see these little tabs here. Pull those out. And then now your grill drops down on top of those. Just like that. And this side over here. Like so. Um, you've got, you know, there's probably an inch and a half or so, two inches of gap between the grill top and the charcoal briquettes. Uh, what is really cool about this is the ease of lighting. From what they were telling me, uh, that basically what you do is you start at one briquette in the one corner, go to the second briquette in the other corner and light it on the diagonal. Within five minutes, it's gone right across and the whole thing has started to burn. Uh, you're looking at approximately 60 minutes at full temperature. And so that gives you, if you think about it, I mean, to cook up, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, even fish. They're, they're all pretty quick to cook, and so you're not looking at a huge amount of time to, uh, to, to be on the grill. So you, you'll be able to do multiples before this starts to hit the peak and then start to wean off in temperature. Uh, and then, she, as uh, the, the rep was telling me, she said that it will still stay hot for at least another hour or so there afterwards, uh, so that you can still use this for, for fun, doing something like uh, roasting marshmallows. Uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it's it's quite multi-purpose. And then after all said and done, uh, whether you, I would suggest, this is my suggestion, is after you're done using it is to pour water on it, obviously, make sure, I mean, there's so much happening, uh, you know, in Canada and in the U.S., unfortunately, with forest fires these days. Um, we, we don't want to be a contributor to that. And so I would always say pour water on it, make sure it's out, out. Uh, and then what you can always do is, uh, if you're not going to pack it out, dig a hole, put it into the ground, bury it, but make sure it's completely out and cold before you do that. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, a lot of campsites uh, or picnic places, they actually have a, a bin where you can dump your used charcoal briquettes. This could go in there as well. It's all biodegradable. So there's nothing in here that is problematic that has to be separated or whatever. Um, I believe they're selling them in the neighborhood at something like $15 each or two for 25. Pretty good deal when you think about it. Uh, you put this into your backpack and you're not having to lug propane canisters or some sort of uh, you know fuel for uh, your, your camp stoves. 
Uh, so yeah, I think it's a great little idea. And it, you've seen how easily it assembles. It goes together very quickly. So within a couple of minutes, you're, you're ready to light it up and, and start cooking. So uh, I think we're gonna, now what we'll do is we'll get it set up. I'm actually also going to use, just for fun, uh, I'm going to use a digital thermometer uh, to measure surface temperatures. I'm gonna try and get it underneath there to see sort of how we're looking for heat. Now, obviously with these type of cooking uh, ideas, the heat's coming up this way. So you're not gonna get a lot of temperature coming out this way. It's gonna come up more straight up. But there is going to be some heat coming down. And so the rep did advise, you wouldn't wanna put this on top of uh, your camp uh, picnic table, for example, if you've put down a plastic sheet, uh, because it will uh, have a good chance of melting that. But so we're gonna find out what that temperature looks like and just to determine how, in, in our opinion, how safe the item is uh, to be using. So. Okay, so I'm getting a baseline of about 41 degrees Celsius, um, right there on the cookie sheet. Yeah, about 30, 38, 38 and a half here. And about 34 on this side here. So this is before this has been lit. So we're gonna light this up now. Four twenty five. Yeah, and I can see the temperature is actually starting to climb across as we go this way. Three hundred in that area. Still in the process of going there. It's in the seventies. Definitely can feel heat coming off. Hey guys, so it's been about five minutes. I can feel the heat's coming off this really good right now. This one's showing at about 480, 485, 490. Pretty consistent heat right across the board here. I don't know if you guys can actually see that, I'll try and. Right, so you've got some good heat coming off of that. Put the uh, grill on it. And the nice thing is, looking underneath the tray here, I'm showing it about 45 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Yep, 45, so not a ton of heat. So it's going to be a fire risk uh, to the table. All right, guys, we're now about 25 minutes into cooking. You can see that the salmon still has ways to go through the thicker areas. It's in that sort of 250 to some of it's as high as like right there showing about 370. Okay guys, so what I did is I've put uh, some tin foil over top. I'm tenting uh, over top of the meat here, attempting to try and capture some of that heat that's just escaping. I'm trying to trap it underneath the tin foil to increase our uh, temperature underneath there so we can cook a little bit quicker and a little more consistently. See if that helps to uh, cook the thicker parts of the meat faster. Okay guys, so we're about 45 minutes into the cooking process. Let's take a look and see how this tenting has helped. Yep, you started pulling the color. You see it's starting to get a little more consistent here. Yeah, definitely, that's, that's the way to go here. Because of the, the, the way that the heat comes up out of these, I think it's really important just to do a little bit of tenting and it solves a lot of the problems. I mean, I've still got very good heat coming up out of here. I, I'm showing, I don't know if you can see it on there, but let me uh, bring it over. So, uh, let's pull the trigger here. So we're still in the, the 600s, like it's still good and hot under there. 
lots of lots of heat coming off this little guy. So impressive considering what it is. It's that it's doing as well as it is for the heat. Okay, guys. So we've done the cooking. The cooking process was about an hour ballpark, maybe about 50, 55 minutes uh, to get this uh, salmon to be cooked all the way through. Uh, as I was saying to you before when we were outside, um, I would recommend putting the, um, if it's a thicker item that you're trying to cook, is putting it into some tin foil to uh, basically tent it or to keep it the steam coming in and cooking it. Um, I think that grill works really well. I think that uh, dollar for dollar, bang for buck, it's a, it's a good deal. Uh, it's just there's a learning curve with using it and, and learning sort of what to do, what not to do. Probably be inclined, if you're, if you're cooking outdoors anyhow, I would just simply put it on the ground, on a, on a rock, somewhere where the heat's not going to matter. Uh, if you're doing it at home, what I did worked really well, and that was just basically taking a, a cookie sheet, putting the one cookie sheet face down, taking the second cookie sheet face up and putting it on there. That gives you some gap in between the uh, the, the actual cooking uh, surface and the, uh, the table, so you get a little bit of protection. As you can see, we've done a pretty nice little meal here. We cooked up some rice, we've got the, the roasted peppers, our salmon. I've got some focaccia bread, we've got uh, balsamic vinegar and olive oil, and then in this one we've got uh, some peach, balsamic, and uh, avocado oil, so uh, it should be a tasty little dinner. So I'm going to go and enjoy this. In the meantime, guys, I would totally suggest if you're going to be doing any camping, backpacking, that kind of stuff, uh, the Casas Grill makes a great alternative to taking with you some big heavy pieces of equipment that requires, you know, propane and gas, etc. So my hat's off to these guys. They've, they've done a good job in engineering this. We'll wait for it to cool down right now and then uh, I'll throw it into my compost. All right, talk to you later.